Welcome to another episode guys. Today we are going to be attempting to turn this pipe bender into a tube bender. And the reason or main motivation for doing this is that a pipe bender is very cheap in comparison to a tube bender. A true tube bender will cost you upwards of about $500 and that's probably without all of the different dies for bending different sizes of tube. Whereas this particular pipe bender, including all the different dies, I think cost me about $100 brand new. And so you can see there's a, a big difference there in price. And it's nice to also be able to use one tool to do multiple things. And so then you may ask yourself why, of course, can't we just put the tube in the pipe bender and it'll bend? I mean, after all, tubes and pipes are both just round, hollow profiles. Well, the difference lies within how those round, hollow profiles are actually measured and designated. And so if you take a pipe, for example, it's measured based on a nominal ID and the wall thickness is called the schedule of the pipe. And so when you compare that to a tube, which is measured based on the outer diameter of the tube and the wall thickness, you get this different system in measurement for both these uh, same round hollow profiles. And so if you take this pipe bender and say you use a one inch pipe die and you take your one inch tube and you put it in the die, you'll notice that there's quite a bit of play in there because of these different measuring systems. The one inch pipe is not equivalent to the one inch tube. And then so you, you might think, okay, well, I'll just grab a smaller die, pipe die, and use it with the larger diameter tube. Even that doesn't work because of the differences in the measurement system, you still get a lot of slop inside the die. And so what that ends up happening inside your pipe bender is when you put the tube in there with all the slop and you go to bend it, the tube eventually kinks right in the center of the bend. This kink gives the pipe bender its nickname when bending tube as a tube kinker. And so today, today we're going to try and modify this pipe bender here to get rid of that kinking that happens when you go to bend tube. And so this concept isn't new. I don't claim to have invented this or anything. I've seen a lot of modifications done online to varying degrees of success. And so while the general concept isn't mine, uh, this particular design is mine. And so we're going to zoom in here and get a better picture of what I've done here. So taking a closer look at this assembly, you'll notice that at the core of the assembly is a pipe die. And the size of this pipe die will be the same size as the tube that you're trying to bend. So for example, if I'm trying to bend a 1.25 inch diameter tube, I'm going to be using a 1.25 inch pipe die. Now, like I mentioned earlier, that's going to result in a lot of slop inside if I just put the tube right in there. So let's take this apart and I'll show you how I'm going to plan on eliminating that slop with this assembly. So right now I'm unthreading this top screw and that will release this clamping piece. And you can see that I've made this clamp piece out of a 1.25 inch pipe. And what this means is that on the inside, the ID of this pipe originally had a nominal 1.25 inch diameter inner diameter. And so this should fit very snugly onto the 1.25 inch tubing because that's measured on the outer diameter. And what you'll also notice on the inside is that I took a 1.25 inch nominally inner diameter pipe I bent it to conform to the shape of the die, so I used this very die itself to bend this tube. And so it obviously matches the profile perfectly. And then all I did was I just cut it in half to provide a channel. And this channel is what the tubing should follow when it bends. And so it should also provide it with a nice, very tight fit on the inside to eliminate that slop. So essentially all I've done is just created some sort of spacer, if you'd like to call it that, or a shim in a sense, to take up the slop. So that takes up the slop on the bottom. This takes up the slop on the, on the top. And so when you slide them in together and you thread down on this top piece here, this should clamp the tubing into place and hopefully take up any space that would allow that tubing to kink when it's bent because when the tubing kinks at the top what ends up happening is it expands outwards so we're essentially just taking up that space to prevent it from expanding outwards and then of course this entire assembly is just mounted to the actual die itself 
And that way when you tighten up on this piece here, it just tightens against the die and you have one solid piece holding the two into place. One other thing to take note of here is the different hole locations for the different pipe dies. And so this single assembly should work for all of the different pipe dies that I have. And the only pieces that I would have to make to pen different sizes of tube, I would have to of course get different pipes, bend them and cut them like this and make a new clamp to account for the different outer diameters of say a different tube size. If I wanted to bend say a 1.75 inch tube, I would have to use the 1.75 inch nominal ID pipes in order to clamp it and to eliminate that space. And so just an extra shot here, you can see down the middle exactly where the tubing will go. And so finally, one other modification that I've seen done to the pipe benders to turn them into tube benders is now the pipe benders come with these tapered rollers up at the top here. And I have seen people replace these with something like this. And so I also went ahead and made these two. Again, I've, I'm bending 1.25 inch tubing. So I used 1.25 inch nominal inner diameter pipe to create these pieces here. And so it's just a pipe that's been cut in half and it will replace the rollers to again eliminate any sort of potential movement of the tubing while I'm trying to bend it. And I'll do the same on the other side. Obviously I made two pieces. So this is the very first time that I'm going to be attempting to bend this tube in a pipe bender. Keep in mind, this is aluminum tube. I don't know if that's gonna make a difference in comparison to bending steel tube, but we're gonna give it a shot and see how it turns out. I haven't taken any sort of previous videos or, or takes of this scene, so we'll really see firsthand um, the first attempt and if this thing actually ends up bending or kinking this aluminum tube. So I have the tube in place. I've marked off the center of the bend where I want it to be. I've lined it up with the center of this particular pipe die. I'm gonna take my clamp piece here, slide it into place. And we'll begin tightening it down and clamping this tube into place. I also have a line on the top of the tube here to give me some indication of where the top is so that my next bend will line up perfectly. So now that I have everything lined up and into place, we're going to attempt to make our first bend on the pipe bender turned into a tube bender. I'm gonna be trying to make a 120 degree bend and that requires each side to be bent down to about 30 degrees. So let's go ahead and see how this works. So once removed, you'll see that there is still some slight kinking on the inside of this tube, which I'm a little bit disappointed with. But the only thing that I'm hopeful about is that this is aluminum tube and it's really thin walled. I'm wondering if maybe this will turn out a little bit different if I step up to a steel tube with a little bit of a thicker wall and hopefully this won't happen. One of the other problems I ran into was that with this die that I created, um, the inside diameter at some points was really, really tight and the tube kind of got caught up in there and you'll see some marking, some witness marks on the tube here from where it kind of got stuck on this particular piece here. And so I think I'm just going to take my grinder and just clean up the edges a little bit, kind of add a little bit of a chamfer so that the tube can slide in and out a lot easier without getting stuck. I was originally shooting for such a tight fit that I think I went a little bit overboard with this piece. So I'm going to clean this up and we're going to try again on the other side. So after several attempts of bending the aluminum tube, I consistently end up with a small amount of crushing on the inside of the bend. The outside doesn't experience any sort of kinking, which is great, but the top of the bend also flattens out a little bit. And so at least for aluminum tube, I can't really say that I would use this for anything structural. 
For light applications, you know, it might be acceptable if you can tolerate the uh, slight crushing on the inside. Now, I don't know if this is just a function of the wall thickness or the material. So of course, we're gonna have to try out some different things. I went out and I picked up some steel tubing of the same outer diameter. So this is, again is one and a quarter inch outer diameter. It's steel tube and I'm gonna fix it into the uh, clamp here. We're gonna put it back in the pipe bender and we're gonna see if we can get any better results with this steel tubing. All right, so with the steel tube clamped into place, we can now proceed to bend it and see if we get any sort of crushing on the inside and see if it's a function of material. This is the same wall thickness as the aluminum tube and it's 1 8 inch thick. Let's go. Okay, so with the steel tube, things are looking pretty promising. There's a small amount of evidence of crushing right in the center of the bend. If I didn't go to the full 90 degrees, that potentially wouldn't even be there. However, of course, I do want to do uh, full 90 degree bends with this tool. And so I need to make some more minor adjustments to the clamp. I think I can get rid of this. I'm gonna try one more piece of steel tube right after I make these modifications and we'll see the results with the last piece of tubing. All right, so I've made the final modifications to this clamping piece. And what I've done is if you look very closely inside here, right in there, you'll see a little bit of a gap between this top clamp piece and this die that I've created. Now, the reason for this is that I've noticed in previous bends that the top of the bend will flatten out a little bit as I bend it. And I lost some clamping force because the clamp was no longer making contact with the tube. Instead, that clearance was taken up and it was starting to contact the die. And I'm thinking this might be contributing to some of the crushing on the inside of the bend. It wasn't too bad last time, but like I said, I'm gonna try and get rid of it completely. So let's go ahead and throw this in the pipe bender and see what kind of results we get. So one other change that's worth mentioning is I'm gonna go back to using these rollers to support the tubes on the side instead of these custom pieces that I had made. These guys seem to really grab onto the tube too much on the side and it sort of pulls it in and doesn't allow the tube to move. So I'm thinking the rollers will allow the tube to kind of find its happy place and hopefully prevent that crushing on the inside of the bend. So you're looking at the second attempt and the third attempt and you'll notice on the third attempt I've bent this tube a few degrees more than on my second try. But the good news is that there is slightly less crushing on the inside so it looks like the modifications I made are working a little bit. The second try if you want to take a look at it again the crushing is a little bit more pronounced and like I said so the modifications seem to have made a little bit of a difference. But since there's still some flattening and some crushing, these tubes are not going to pass any sort of roll cage inspection or anything of that nature. So you're, I'm still limited to you know light duty use for these bends. I'm definitely not going to be using them for anything structural. 
So this has been my take on pipe bender turned into tube bender. And the verdict seems to be that if you want clean professional bends, you're going to have to invest the money in a proper tube bender. But if you want something quick and dirty, you can come up with something like this for not much money and you can get some decent bends for light duty use. I'm probably gonna put this thing to use for some future projects, so definitely stay tuned for those.